Hey, what's happening? It's Captain Mike, Florida Sport Fishing TV. Welcome back to another one of our Thursday night live seminars. Thanks for joining us, man. We've got a great one going on here tonight. Got a lot to talk about, man, a lot to talk about. Real quick, just want to mention a couple things. Again, we're down here in Marathon now filming Florida Sport Fishing TV. Episodes are just really coming out absolutely awesome. New fisheries down here, new species that we're targeting. Uh, we're revamping the entire show. It's really going to be absolutely awesome this upcoming season. And again, our season premiere is in July. That's when our season 11, man, I can't even believe it's been 11 consecutive years that we've been filming Florida Sport Fishing TV. But again, season premiere in July, uh, airing on Bally Sports Sun, formerly Fox Sports Sun. So same network, channel 402 uh, in HD. Same network, same programming, same everything, uh, but just a new name. Again, it's Bally Sports Sun. Of course, all of our episodes will also be up on our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash Florida Sport Fishing. And also in July, I'm absolutely thrilled to announce that Florida Sport Fishing TV is also going to air on all of the streaming devices, Amazon, uh, Samsung TVs, LG TVs, all of that kind of smart device stuff. It's about time. I know probably should have happened years ago, but it's happening now, and that's what's important. Uh, so again, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, our seminars here, you know, almost every week, unless we're out filming on a Thursday, every week we go live at 730. A wide variety of topics that are related to the Florida Keys here, but also a lot of this information you can use wherever you are around the state of Florida or even in some other states as well. Listen, a grouper is a grouper and a grouper eats like a grouper, regardless if it swims off the Carolinas, Texas or Florida. It's a grouper. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you're local, great. If you're not, at, you know, like I said, a lot of great info. Uh, the seminars here, you know, they also, if you don't catch the whole thing live, it's also going to be in our feed. So you can come back at a different time and watch it in our feed. Uh, and also they're on our YouTube channel. You know, like I said, during the last seminar, we're now posting all of these weekly seminars on our YouTube channel. So you can catch up on all of the ones that we've done in the past. Um, you know, just again, as a reminder, I see a lot of new names here and a reminder to the people that have joined us before, we start all of our Thursday night seminars with a brief live fishing report, a real-time fishing report from what's happening down here across the Florida Keys, just to kind of bring you into the game, to keep you up to speed as to what's going on, the good stuff, the bad stuff, etc. It's obviously impossible to cover everything in a short period of time, so, you know, we just kind of give you an overview before we kick into our actual topic of conversation, which tonight, as you all know, is grouper fishing. You know, super excited about it. Grouper fishing opens, grouper season opens May 1. So a lot to talk about there. A lot of guys gearing up for it. A lot of guys have been releasing grouper. But before we get into that, let's start, like I said, with that real-time fishing report, okay? The big news across the Keys, I'd have to say, is the influx of dolphin. We're starting to see a lot of dolphin around. Mixed size fish, a lot of schoolies, a few gaffers mixed in. Not a lot of giants, but there have been some nice quality fish, including a 61-pounder caught off a marathon here last week. That's a giant, right? A giant bull. You know, that fish is, I don't want to say one in a million, one in a hundred million you know, to reach 61 pounds, but it could happen at any time. That fish was cruising around under frigate birds, you know, and I believe they threw a ballyhoo to it or I don't, it wasn't caught on the troll. Um, so it could happen to you at any time when you're out there and you've got to be ready for those once in a lifetime fish, you know, make sure your tackle is, you know, absolutely perfect every time. Uh, along with the dolphin, and keep in mind, there have been scattered dolphins. Some days they're in 250 to 280, other days they're out in 800 feet. And of course, other days they're way out there in the hump, around the marathon hump, Isle Morada hump. Uh, so you've got to be prepared to cover some ground, to look for these fish. A sharp pair of eyes is crucial. Binoculars, I cannot stress how important good stabilized binoculars are. I use the Fujis. You can, you know, spot 
stuff miles and miles away, or I don't want to say miles, of course, that's a metaphor, but a great distance away where you couldn't see them with the naked eye. So binoculars are imperative when it comes to catching those dolphins and finding them feeding under the frigates. Blackfin tunas around, of course, everybody knows out at the humps, you catch them till your arms fall off. Sharks eat most of them, but you can certainly go out there, put some fish in the boat. Uh, but the nice thing is this week, there have been a lot of quality blackfins, fish over 20 pounds right on the edge from 120 to 200 feet. Guys that are kite fishing for the sailfish are catching some nice blackfins mixed in as well. So that's really cool. And keep in mind that sailfish, you know, speaking of those, the bite's been good. The bite's been hot. It's not uncommon to go out, you know, release five to 10 sailfish here for the guys that are kite fishing or even sight fishing, you know, and when you don't have those good sight fishing conditions with tailing conditions, then kite fishing is the way to go. Um, so the sail fishing's been good. Not a lot of Wahoo reports, not to say that, you know, you're not gonna come across a Wahoo here and there, because you certainly may, um, but not a lot of Wahoo reports lately. On the reef, yellowtail snapper fishing has been excellent recently. A lot of big mangroves mixed in. Uh, of course, the occasional mutton snapper, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record week after week, but that's what reef fishing here is in the Keys, okay? These fish are here, and you know, some days are better than other days, but it's not like you're going to go out there and catch nothing. I mean, as long as you put in the time, put in the effort, you know, look for moving water, you need current, you know, look for the moving water, you're going to catch fish, and some days it's going to be predominantly yellowtails, other days you're going to catch more mangroves or lane snapper, and you always have those bonus fish, you know, you always have those groupers, right, um, that'll eat your baits. And we're going to talk about those groupers on the patch reefs as well. Permit on the wrecks here off the Keys, offshore, they're still there. They're being released every day. We had an absolutely awesome show last week. I'm sorry that we missed our Thursday night live seminar last week. It's because we were out filming a show on releasing Permit. Um, on the Marathon Rex here, and man, we banged them up. It was a ton of fun. Super, super exciting fishing. Can't wait for you guys to see that episode later on this year, okay? Um, closer to shore, the tarpon fishing's picking up. You know, water temperature's climbing, so the tarpon bite is absolutely picking up. We did have that last cold front. Those water temperatures plummeted. The tarpon got lockjaw, and that was the end of that for a few days. But again, those water temperatures are increasing. So a lot of tarpon, you know, action going on right now across the Keys. A um, lot of stuff, you know, around the bridges. Of course, you can always catch jacks, sharks. There's always something to keep you busy. Okay, there really is. Dry tortugas is wide open, of course, if you're fishing out there with big muttons. A lot of groupers out there, the blackfin tunas, you know, in the bay. Uh, there's still a few cobias around. It's not super hot the way that it was, but you could always go out there. And the guys that have the spots that know those cobia spots are really banging them up. You know, there's fish out there on those reefs and wrecks out there, and they can catch them all of the time. And remember, this is just a quick little overview. Listen, get one other thing to sword fishing. Yes, guys are going out. They're catching the swords. There's been some really quality fish caught lately and a lot of small fish that have been tagged and released point I'm making is you got to put in the time to fish are out there. Lots of different choices, lots of different venues. You know, one of the biggest challenges that we face, and I'm sure a lot of anglers face down here, is do you zing instead of zang? Or do you go this way instead of that way? You know, there's so many different things to do. So you really have to just be prepared for plan A, B, and C on each given day and make the most of it as that day develops, depending on what, you know, sort of conditions you're seeing out there. But that's the cool thing about the keys is there's always something to catch. Now, let's go ahead and transition right into our topic, right into grouper fishing. I'm going to tell you, I've got a lot to go over here. I'm going to go fast. I'm going to try and drive all this information to you here. Um, you, know, you can take notes. You can always catch up and watch this seminar down the line at your own convenience. Uh, but right now, you know, grab your popcorn, grab your cocktail, grab whatever it is you're going to grab. Sit down, kick your feet up and get ready to really get loaded up with a lot of good info that's going to help you catch more grouper this season. Okay. And keep in mind, you know, grouper are one of those species that are just wide open. And what do I mean by wide open? This is a fish that you could catch from 20 feet of water to 1,200 feet of water, and even deeper and even shallower, to be honest with you. But 20 to 1,200 feet of water, you know, it's a wide group of fish within the grouper family. 
Uh, we're talking about red grouper, gag grouper, black grouper, scamp grouper, snowies, yellow edge grouper, yellow fin grouper. And by the way, you know, yellow fin and yellow edge grouper are two different species altogether. Keep that in mind. Misty grouper, Warsaw grouper, and of course, then there's the giant, the Goliath grouper, right? So there's so many different grouper species. You can catch these fish on light tackle, on heavy tackle, on electric deep drop tackle. You can catch them drifting, trolling from an anchored boat with live bait, with dead bait, cut bait, artificials. I mean, it goes on and on. I don't know of any other species, any other body of fish that's so wide open, right? That's so many different venues and so many ways to, you know, to target these fish from so many different boats, from land. Guys are, you know, land-based anglers can catch grouper. And of course, all the way to the point of getting on a long range head boat, like the Yankee Captains that sails out of Key West and, you know, doing a three or four day trip, 150 miles off the coast, deep in the Gulf of Mexico. So everything in between is wide open on the grouper. And again, listen, it's impossible for me to go over everything all in a 30 to 60 minute session. So I'm gonna do the best that I can. And keep in mind, you know, as I say in each, each seminar, if something's working for you, man, stick with it, dude. Keep doing it, tell me all about it. I wanna learn more. You know, I'm simply sharing my personal experiences, what I've learned over the years, you know, through publishing Florida Sport Fishing Magazine for nearly 20 years, filming Florida Sport Fishing TV for, you know, now going on 11 seasons and fishing for 46 years, you know. My dad took me to the side of a lake when I was four years old and I've been hooked ever since. So I'm just sharing my lifetime of experience with you and what works for us. Um, but again, if something's working for you, stick with it by all means. So, you know, because there is such a wide venue and there's so many venues and so much different tackle and so many different grouper species and baits, it's so hard to go over it all. You know, I decided that instead we'll talk about it by venue, but kind of almost like by geographical section, you know, starting with the Florida Keys reefs and wrecks, the patch reefs and wrecks. And we're going to talk about different tackle. I'm going to show you the stuff that we use in these areas. Um, but understand, always be ready to adapt. Always be ready to switch it up based on what you're seeing, you know. And like I said, always expect the unexpected because if there's one guarantee in grouper fishing is that there are no guarantees. These fish are smart. Guys are going out right now. They got honey holes where they're releasing keepers, you know, getting dialed in come May 1 and poof, fish are gone. Okay. Just happens sometimes. Hopefully that doesn't happen, you know, this season. Nevertheless, the patch reefs, right? We're talking about coral reefs, rocky outcroppings, you know, broken bottom in give or take 30 feet of water. Some of it's shallower, 25 feet to 40 feet, but really all of those patch reefs, you know, 30 feet, 40 feet, that's where it's at. And it does stretch, you know, and go even deeper to 70, 80 feet, there's a lot of reef as well. If you're really looking for the grouper there, there's, you know, bait is primarily the way that guys are doing it. Now, of course, you know, when we're yellowtail fishing and anchored and chumming, we're basically using, you know, a lightweight yellowtail rod. It's a chaos seven foot rod, seven foot six. We've got a variety of them rated for eight to 17 pound line. It's matched to a Daiwa BG 4000 spinning reel loaded with 12 pound diamond line. It's an, ultimately a really light outfit with 20 pound leader with a jig head. That's all that that is. And that jig head is gonna vary in weight depending on the current. And if the fish are held up on the bottom or up on top, etc. So point I'll make is we catch a lot of grouper on this outfit, even though it's a yellowtail outfit, we're not intentionally targeting the groupers, but you put a fresh chunk bait on there and you drop it to the bottom, and you're hooked up, baby, and it could be a nice gag, it could be a nice black grouper, a nice red grouper. All three of those species are roaming these patch reefs. So at any time, you can catch a nice keeper grouper on a really light outfit. Are you gonna get every one of them to the boat? Absolutely not. Are you gonna lose some, get rocked up, get busted off? You won't be able to stop some. All of those things are gonna happen. But at the end of the day, you're gonna put some quality fish in the boat. So when you're out there fishing for the yellowtails and the mangroves, 
just remember that at any time you could, you know, connect with a nice grouper as well. Now, while you're there chumming and of course attracting attention, right? Because you've got a chum slick going on, you've got, you know, all of the yellowtails and the mangroves and, you know, variety of other species higher up in the water column. Trust me, those groupers are laying down there. They're laying down there, picking off all of the big morsels and stuff that, you know, is falling through all of the snappers up higher in the water column. And that's when you want to, you know, if you really want to target those fish, you're going to want to fish a bigger bait. A live pinfish is an absolute deadly bait or a small yellowtail, okay? I'm not going to tell you to fish an illegal size yellowtail on the bottom for groupers because it's wrong to fish a short yellowtail snapper for grouper. I wouldn't do that. Um, however, you know, like I said, a grunt or something like that on the bottom is an absolutely deadly bait, especially for the black groupers. Now you're going to want to beef it up. You know, this is not a game of light tackle when you're fishing those bigger baits where you know, hey, the only thing that I'm targeting here is a grouper. I'm going to get bit by two things. It's going to be one of two things. I'm going to get bit or I should say three things. I'm gonna get bit by a nice grouper, which is of course what I'm looking for, potentially a mutton snapper, but not really. You know, usually it's gonna be a grouper or a shark, likely a nurse shark is gonna eat the bait. So it's one of those two things, but you're really after those groupers. So you can do this even when you're anchored up and you're fishing for the yellowtails and you're fishing for the mangroves, you're in the back of the boat, you're feeding baits out with light spinners, get up in the bow, get a heavier outfit loaded with 50 pound line, okay, whatever it is, you know, here it's a Daiwa Saltiga lever drag reel, an LD60, it's a two speed, you don't need a two speed, you don't need something as fancy schmancy, but it's a great reel for the job, it's matched with a pretty heavy duty, you know, chaos rod, a 30 to 60 pound class stand up rod, Okay, I've got a top shot of clear monofilament. The reel's loaded with high-vis diamond line because I use this for a variety of different applications. But in this application, I'll just put 30 feet you know, of clear diamond presentation fluorocarbon leader on top of the high-vis. I don't need that high-vis when I'm dropping straight down for groupers. And then I've got just a heavy-duty ball bearing swivel right there. Okay, I'm gonna put right up here on the line. It's not on here now. But I'm going to put an egg sinker on here, okay, six ounces, whatever, okay, it doesn't really matter, you know, when you're fishing 30 feet of water, six ounces, eight ounces, 10 ounces, you know, you're going to be straight up and down, that's the key. Not too long of a leader, maybe six to 10 feet at the very, very most, you don't need any more than 10 feet. It's got a VMC 9-0 circle hook, which by the way, that hook right there, that VMC 9-0 circle hook, that's my all-around go-to grouper hook. Right there, there it is. I use it in a wide array of applications. You're gonna see this same hook tonight on this patch leaf rod. You're gonna see it on a Gulf of Mexico rod, the way I have it rigged. You're gonna see it on my deep drop rig, the way I have it rigged. It's that same hook right there. It's a VMC 9-0 circle hook, thin wire. Uh, it's an inline circle hook. It's super sharp and it's super strong. That's the grouper hook of choice for me right there. Nevertheless, I'm gonna take a pinfish or something similar. I'm gonna hook them with that circle hook. I'm gonna drop that lid right to the bottom and then I'm gonna lock up the reel and I'm gonna crank it a couple of cranks. I don't want the lead in the bottom because what's gonna happen is that live bait's gonna be trying to escape and he's gonna drag that egg sinker into the reef and you're gonna get hung up every time. In addition to that, that egg is going to be bouncing up and down on the rock and you're going to spook any, everything that's within a country mile. So hit the bottom, crank it up a couple times, lock up the drag, put the rod in a rod holder, set it and forget it. Just like that. You're back there, you know, yellowtail fishing, catching the snappers. You suddenly you turn around, your clicker's on, the rod's doubled over, it's you know, up and down going crazy. You drop your rod, you run up to the bow and just crank and try and get that grouper up out of, you know, off the bottom. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't take long to get bit. So it's a really, really cool tactic if you wanna catch, you know, these groupers while you're snapper fishing down here as well. It's kind of a twofold thing. You know, I like to take advantage of every opportunity. If I'm gonna be yellowtail fishing, you know, when I've got a chump slick going, I'll tell you what, why only target the yellowtails? Maximize on every opportunity. Set a grouper rod up in the bow, then take a live bait with a short trace of wire, chuck it way out behind a boat, put it up in your hard top, 
you know, up on top of the hard top in the CV and let it just sit back there for a big smoker king that comes by. Who knows, right? Not saying everything's going to pay off every trip, but that's the name of the game. One big fish can change the outcome of an entire trip. So I like to maximize my odds across the board there. Now, another way to catch these fish on the patch reefs that I absolutely love and that I really, really enjoy is trolling deep diving plugs, okay? Not a lot of guys are doing this, you know, trolling the deep diving plugs for the groupers. We touched on this in a seminar that we had on deep diving plugs, but I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more today because obviously this is specific to grouper fishing, okay? Big plugs, I fish these Nomad DTX minnows, the 220 gram size. This is a big plug. It's giving that grouper a reason to come out and attack that bait right there, okay? It's got a really big lip and that, that lure right there will swim 25 to 26 feet deep at five knots. That's been the, the key for me is five knots seems to be the ideal speed. I'll troll anywhere from 26 to 35 feet of water, okay? When the water's crystal clear, which it almost always is out here on the patch reefs, you can see, you can see the patches, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. You can see all those patches. So I zigzag around the edges of the patches. I also go over, but I like to go around the edges. Why? Because grouper like ledges. They like caves, they like holes. Rather than hanging out right on the top in the center of the, you know, of all of that debris, of all of that reef, oftentimes they're under a ledge around the sides of it, around the perimeter. So I like to, you know, like I said, zigzag and work those whole areas. I fish two rods, two plugs, one a little bit closer to the boat, one a little bit further. It's that same outfit that we talked about for fishing, you know, the live bait. That's why having sets of rods is so important. But again, it's that same outfit. It's just a stand-up rod rated for 30 to 60 pound line. The Daiwa Saltiga LD60. It's a two-speed reel, high-vis line, so I can track it the diamond presentation, clear fluorocarbon top shot, and right to the lure itself. And by the way, when it comes to color patterns, that bright pink has just been absolutely killer. And certainly my choice in deep diving plugs, if I can only pick one, I have more confidence in this one than any other one. But of course, I'm also fishing this lure more than any other one. So obviously you're gonna catch more fish on something that you're fishing more. Nevertheless, you can, like I said, zigzag across uh, you know, all of those patches. The reason I only fish those two plugs, if you fish anything else, you're gonna be dealing with crap, you know, barracudas, other bites, and then you're just gonna be so busy dealing with all of that that you're not gonna be able to really focus on those grouper bites, okay? The only challenge across the keys when fishing, trolling the plugs, you know, on those shallow patch reefs is a lot of seagrass, a lot of weed, a lot of grass. And some days, man, let me tell you, it is horrific and you just can't do it. It's just too much of a pain in the butt. Don't struggle with it. You know, try moving east or west to a different area. Maybe the grass won't be as bad. Um, and then some days the grass just isn't bad at all. Um, you know, I like this tactic. It's really specialized and it's incredibly rewarding to catch a nice 20 pound black grouper, you know, 30 pound black grouper on a trolling plug. It's a killer bite and really, really neat. Very clean, very easy to do. Um, and just about anybody can do it as well. You're fishing in that shallow water. So moving out a little bit deeper, you know, we talked about the patches where you always have those chances for the red groupers. There's gag groupers on the patch reefs. Of course, the black grouper is really coveted. You know, you say black grouper, everybody's like, what? Where? Where's our black grouper? You're catching what? Blacks where? You know, everybody loves those black groupers, you know. And also, I should also mention that just prior to those patch reefs, you also have Hawks Channel, right? Let's not forget Hawks Channel, which runs parallel to the island chain. In Hawks Channel are humps. There are particular humps throughout the channel. You can find them on charts. You can find them by networking, you know, with other local guys and a grouper hold on those, on those humps in Hawks Channel as well. So maybe if you don't find them out on the patch reefs, they could be in the channel, depending on water, you know, water temperature. Sometimes they'll move in there. Sometimes they stay offshore. Or I should say out on the patches, sometimes they're in both places, sometimes you just never can find them. 
but nevertheless, that's an option as well. Now, remember the grouper here in the Keys and beyond have a tremendous amount of forage options. You know, they have a lot of food choices. A grouper has an incredibly varied diet. Holy crabs, lobster, shrimp, squid, every fin fish that swims, snappers, you know, anything. Groupers will eat almost anything. Octopus, okay, they'll eat anything. So this is a fish that has tremendous, you know, options when it comes to eating. So it can be picky at times. If something doesn't look right, smell right, move right, feel right, he's not going to touch it. You know, on other occasions, they seem to just gobble up everything in sight. Um, but keep in mind that they do have a lot of options, so make sure that you're dialed in there. Now, from the, you know, patch reefs, there's also a lot of wrecks here in the Keys. We all know that. Some of those wrecks are big, you know, but most are not. Most of them are small pieces of structure. They call them wrecks across the Keys. I made the mistake when I initially moved down here of believing, not believing, but when I heard a guy say, hey, I was, you know, caught these groupers or muttons or whatever on a wreck, to me a wreck is a large sunken ship. That's a wreck or a barge or old subway cars or something, you know, a big giant wreck. Well, yeah, not down here, pal. Down here, a dishwasher is a wreck. Down here, a, a two bike bodies is a wreck. You know, anything that potentially attracts life and, and structure could be considered a wreck down here. So some of those spots will hold the groupers, some won't. There's no magic to it. You gotta put in the time. Um, when it comes to the baits offshore to, to entice those bigger groupers, again, live pinfish is a mainstay. They love the pinfish. And the guys, especially in the Gulf of Mexico, know this, right? If you're fishing the middle grounds or anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico and you want to target gag groupers and red groupers, they love the pinfish, the live pinfish, especially the gags, no question. So, and it's the same here in the Keys. It's one of their primary forage sources um, and it's a great bait to use. However, goggle eyes are a great bait, pilchards, ballyhoo plugs, you know, all of basically the same baits that you would use for mutton snapper are also going to be effective for a wide array of grouper species as well. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Rigging techniques are gonna vary a little bit, but you know, truthfully, in a lot of the areas where we're targeting the mutton snapper, it's almost snapper and grouper fishing at the same time. And sometimes you, you can catch a grouper on one bait and then you just drop down the next drop and it's a mutton snapper because they inhabit the same sort of structure, but that's a different you know, topic altogether. So the wreck fishing, you know, certainly a possibility. I think if you're specifically gonna target the groupers on a wreck rather than drifting, you're gonna wanna anchor on those deeper structures, okay? Why? Because unlike a mutton snapper that will roam hundreds of yards around the debris field and around the rubble or the wreck, okay, groupers tend to pick a home. They have a cave, they have a ledge, they have a hole. And yeah, they'll roam around there, but not very far from it, okay? So obviously if you're drifting at a knot, three quarters of a knot, a knot and a half, whatever it may be, half a knot, I mean, of course the conditions are gonna vary, you know, you don't have a lot of time really in the strike zone where that grouper can key in on that bait, come out, commit, you know, to eating that bait. So oftentimes anchoring on those deeper structures is the way to go, okay? Then of course you've got Florida Bay. This is a whole other venue, it's another ocean. Literally, this is another ocean, you know, and especially here in Marathon or Isle Morada or throughout the Keys, listen, we come out, we go left, south, we're in the Atlantic. We go right, north, we're in Florida Bay, we're in the Gulf of Mexico. Two different fisheries all together, you know, the, the bottom is different, the depth is different, the water temperature is different, the forage sources are different, and the fish behave differently. But they're there, you know, Florida Bay, there's a tremendous amount of rock piles and wrecks scattered throughout Florida Bay, and you're going to find a lot of red groupers. You're going to find a lot of red groupers in Florida Bay. And if you've got some of these spots dialed in, if you can get your hands on some of these good GPS coordinates, you know, for shallow spots, I'm talking 15 to 20 feet, 
That's it, 15 to 20 feet, some even shallower. And you'll catch a ton of red groupers. You know, fish and cut bait, just like if you were chumming for mangrove snappers, because there will be mangrove snapper on those, you know, structures as well. So you're essentially gonna be targeting two different species. You don't need a heavier gear, you can pretty much get away with lighter stuff. Now, the other big grouper in Florida Bay, somebody wanna take a stab at what that giant is in Florida Bay, and of course that would be the Goliath grouper. And this seminar is not really about Goliath grouper, but if you wanna catch one of the largest, most powerful fish in the ocean, you know, just take a big bait on a big rod with big leader, giant hook, drop it down around any structure out in Florida Bay and hold on. Hold on, baby, because he's going to pull your ass off the boat. So make sure that you really have a good footing, okay? And it's happened and it'll happen again. We're talking about giant Goliath groupers to 500 pounds. We're talking about monsters that will eat permit whole, okay? That will eat every snapper that you hook. They'll just swallow them all. You know, we're talking about a monster that you can fish a large skate or a ray or a large jack craval like this. You know, you can't even see my hands on there, right? Like this, okay, literally giant. And drop it down and these giant Goliath groupers will just suck it down. Guys go out there with ropes and hand line these things. They're just crazy fish. Um, obviously, you can't take them out of the water. They're totally protected, all of that good stuff. Nobody really intentionally targets them unless they just want something fun to do for a charter client or, you know, just to go out there and battle a sea monster. Obviously, that's always a possibility. Who knows if that fishery will ever open up again? You know, time will tell. I don't even want to spend any more time on the Goliath groupers. Okay. Um, while we're there in Florida Bay in the Gulf of Mexico, of course, you've got the dry tortugas, right? World famous dry tortugas. Primarily in the dry tortugas, yeah, you're going to see some gag groupers, but you're going to see more red groupers than anything else. You're going to catch those red groupers while you're fishing for the mutton snappers with live and dead bait. You can also jig those fish. You can jig them with slow pitch jigs. Um, another really effective jig for red groupers in, you know, around the dry tortugas, a big bucktail like this with a ballyhoo. Okay, a ballyhoo right on there, or even a squid on there. Um, drop it to the bottom and work it, and the groupers will just absolutely annihilate these white bucktails that have, you know, a, a live bait teaser, you know, on there, so to speak. Um, that's a deadly, deadly bait across the dry tortugas. And you always can hook a black, a nice black grouper in the dry tortugas or caught as well but primarily they're the red groupers, okay? And nice fish too, you know? And keep in mind, a big red grouper nickname fire trucks, you know? So if you aren't familiar with it and you hear somebody go, oh man, we got a couple nice fire trucks, they're referring to big red groupers, okay? Um, on the jigging side across the dry tortugas, like I said, guys will go out and, and slow pitch jig them with a variety of different types of slow pitch jigs worked on the bottom. However, I have found from personal experience, um, and of course, you know, across the board, there are more effective venues in the Gulf of Mexico to target groupers on jigs than just the dry tortugas. The dry tortugas is great, 50, 60 miles from Key West, you know, of course, depending on where you're fishing, tremendous opportunities out there for snappers and groupers. Um, and almost a sure thing, you know, the sharks on some trips have just been horrendous, but there's so many spots to fish out there across the dry tortugas, you couldn't fish them all in a lifetime. So there's plenty of places to move to. Uh, Seymour Maps is a great resource for the dry tortugas. If you're unfamiliar with the territory, you of course could always charter a boat from Key West or some other areas in the Keys here and head out there. There's some head boats, like I said, uh, Greg on the Yankee Captain still does dry tortugas trips where you can have an opportunity to catch the red groupers there. If you want to specifically target the bigger, like a black grouper, man, a butterfly yellowtail is a deadly bait for big black groupers, okay? But again, be prepared because other than a big black grouper, big old nurse shark, you know, Mr. Rubbery Lips may come along and suck down that butterfly yellowtail. Um, but that's a great bait for big blacks, you know, in the dry tortuga is a fresh butterfly yellowtail or a fresh butterfly 
Rainbow Runner, Speedo, you know, something big. These fish have giant mouths and a giant appetite. And, you know, a 50 pound black grouper is really not interested in a tiny little chunk bait. You know, the reward for the energy is just not there. They, if they're going to put in that energy to eat something, it's got to be worth it for them to eat it. Okay, keep that in mind. So big bait equals big fish when it comes to grouper and the dry tortugas. Now, beyond the dry tortugas lies what could very well be, you know, I've filmed shows out there that I've titled The Last Frontier, Pulley Ridge and Beyond. We're talking about going, you know, 100 miles offshore, if not more. And what happens way out there is you have a ledge that's 220 feet deep. It's a big plateau, we're call, we'll call it. And that entire area is covered in plate coral really unique kind of stuff. Plate coral, it almost is like giant scales, the size of paper plates that lies, you know, horizontally across the bottom. It's very brittle. It's almost like the best way for me to explain it. It's like soft concrete. You know, you can pick it up. It's solid, but you can crumble it right in your hands. Okay. It's really weird. And it has this really cool grass. I'm going to call it kelp that grows and intermingles in between this play coral. And that's what the bottom is for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And roaming on that play coral, hunting all over the play coral, are a ton of red groupers. And some are enormous, okay? Really phenomenal red grouper fishing out there. Mixed in with the red grouper, you're gonna find some scamp grouper. Arguably one of the best tasting fish in all of the oceans. Um, certainly a prized fish is a scamp, okay? Everybody loves to catch those scamps. And they're definitely mixed in with the red groupers. But the primary grouper species that you will catch daytime and nighttime out there in Pulley Ridge on that bank, as we call it, above all of that play coral, is the red grouper, okay? Mixed in, blackfin snappers, called hand bone snappers, mutton snappers, and other species, but the groupers, the red groupers, especially the big ones, the fire trucks, man, a lot of fun, very rewarding. Two ways that we target them out there, and keep in mind, you certainly can run out there in your own boat. Okay, today's high performance center consoles, you know, certainly have the capabilities of running 100 miles, fishing 24 hours and running home. You know, you'll probably catch your limit way before that, but nevertheless, you can overnight it out there or you can do day trips out there. You know, boats are running 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. Heck, some of these guys with quad 450 Mercury racing engines are running 80 miles an hour. It's insane. And now, of course, Mercury has these amazing 600 horsepower outboards. But again, that's a topic for a different conversation. Getting out there, if you can't do it on your own boat, your best choice is going to be the Yankee Captains. This is a head boat down out of Key West, sleeps, you know, 20 or more people, um, all of the accommodations of home, great galley, air conditioning, showers, all of that stuff. They give you all your food. I mean, of course, you're paying the price, but absolutely worth it. And they put you on the meat, baby. They put you on the meat. And you can fish around the clock. So point I'm making is, and it's not a plug for them, I'm saying you can get out there. There's no excuse to say, hey, well, I can't go. I don't have a boat. I don't have a buddy with a boat. Well, you don't need a buddy with a, with a boat. Greg, who owns that boat, is your buddy. Just pick up the phone and call him, and they'll book a, you know, a, a ticket for you. And out there, there's two ways that we target the grouper. The way that I prefer is to jig them. They really respond well to jigs. And I, again, a lot of you guys know I'm really into slow pitch jigging. And my favorite jig is, you know, something like this. I'm gonna kind of show it to you here. Everybody has a different name for these jigs. Some call them wobble jigs. Some, I don't, I don't you know, again, everybody has a different name. The Rector was the original but it's basically a leaf shaped jig. You can see it has a concave kind of belly there. It's wide, it has some glow, okay? A lot of different companies sell these. I know one in particular, Jigs R Us, has them in stock ready to ship, okay, in a variety of sizes. This one's 250 grams, which is perfect. If I had to pick one size for out there, it would be this one. If I had to pick one color pattern, it would be this one, what I call the acid glow. Okay, and it just has, like I said, it looks like a 
bait fish, it looks like a squid. I don't care what it looks like, they love it. You drop it down to the bottom, it wobbles like crazy, and you work it in the bottom 20 feet of the water column, and you know that's that strike zone for those red groupers, and you really can catch a lot of those fish. It's a tremendous amount of fun, especially on the slow pitch gear, 30 pound diamond braid, little Daiwa Saltiga 30HA, little star drag reel, 50 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon leader, Okay, 10 feet, that's all you need. You don't need a 50 foot top shot. I don't care what anybody tells you. 10 to 12 feet is all that you need of that top shot. Um, and then, like I said, that jig, work it off the bottom and you'll have an absolute ball catching those red groupers and a variety of other species out there. Another killer jig out there is a good old faithful, just gold hammer jig. We call it Goldilocks. Somewhere along the line, it got the nickname Goldilocks. This one's been beat up, it's tarnished, but I'll tell you what, if I only had one, one jig, one metal jig, if I could only pick one metal jig for the rest of my life, it would absolutely unequivocally be a diamond jig and very likely be this hammered gold jig. Again, the red groupers love it. And I'll tell you why, just a quick, quick fish story. I don't want to get too far off track. I'm out there one day fishing, fishing a completely different style jig, caught a red grouper. The fishing was slow. There was maybe five or six guys fishing on the boat at the time. It was a very, very slow pick. And I happened to hook up a nice red grouper, got him in the boat. And of course, as I'm unhooking the jig, I could see in his mouth, he's got a little bait fish that he just eats. Something that really looked like a wrasse or a perch, you know, some kind of sea perch. But it was that big and that color. It was like six inches long and it had this gold kind of bar to it. And I looked at it and I said, you know, I'm gonna try something here. And I went in my bag and I whipped out Goldilocks because it really mimicked that fish. And I proceeded to hold a clinic on the boat um, and literally just absolutely wrecked them while everybody else just sat there and watched and said, how are you doing that? And nobody caught on. Okay, and it was just about matching the hatch. So sometimes it works, it doesn't all of the time, but it certainly did that time, but it enlightened me and it made me understand why that's such an effective jig out there because it does match their primary forage. It also looks like a squid, okay, or a bait fish. I don't care what it looks like, they eat it. That's the bottom line. They're cheap, you know, this is not a 20, 30, 40, $50 jig, this is a $3 jig. I'm telling you, go on eBay, and look for gold hammer jigs, eight to 10 ounces, and you can get your hands on these for cheap, really cheap. And they're great. They're great across a wide array of venues. Now, also out there, way out in the Gulf of Mexico, you know, when you're fishing Pulley Ridge and up on the bank, like we just talked about, you're jigging, but you could also, of course, bait fish, right? So my outfit that I use bait fishing out there, because not everybody's into jigging, not everybody wants to do it daytime, nighttime. They want to break, they want to fish bait. Sometimes the fish respond better to the meat rather than the metal. Um, what I have found, if I'm on that boat, if I'm on that long range boat, and we're you know really catching a lot of groupers, and there's 20 guys on the boat. If 18 of them are fishing bait and two are jigging, the two that are jigging are gonna smoke the whole boat. They're just gonna annihilate the entire boat and catch more than all other 18 anglers put together. However, if there's 20 people on the boat and 18 of them are jigging and two people are bait fishing, the jig bite's gonna be slower. You know, it's just the way that it is. I think because when you've got so many people bait fishing, you're creating these natural chump slicks. There's so much scent in the water. And then suddenly there's two guys, three guys, you know, that are jigging and you've got motion. Those tend to get picked off really, really quickly. Um, on the other hand, if so many people are jigging and there's no scent in the water and there's just all of these different jigs going up and down and it, it just doesn't seem to work as well. So, you know, again, not, not a rule, but just something, an observation is really all that it is. Nevertheless, if you're gonna bait fish, different tackle altogether, different rig. Okay, I'm gonna show this to you here. Got too many rods lined up that I'm trying to show you. Okay, now this, again, really versatile, all across the Gulf of Mexico, the west coast of Florida, the east coast of Florida, the Bahamas, I don't care where you are. If you're grouper fishing and fishing live bait, 
This is an absolutely awesome rod to do it with. Okay, it's an eight foot rod, okay, rated for 30 to 50 pound line. It's a very thin blank. It's a composite blank. Okay, it's graphite and glass, so it's incredibly light, incredibly light, but incredibly strong. It's matched here to a Daiwa Saltiga 35HA Star Drag Conventional Reel. There it is right there. Again, loaded with the 30 pound diamond braid. Don't be under the impression that you need to fish 65 pound braid. Listen, the guys that are daytime sword fishing catching 500 pound swordfish are fishing 65 pound braid. Do you need that same 65 pound braid to catch a 12 pound red grouper? No, period, you don't you need 30 pound diamond braid. That's the perfect balance. It gives you plenty of strength. It allows you to fish the least amount of weight that you possibly can to you know, get in the strike zone. If one guy, if you're fishing 65 or 80 pound braid on your reel, you might need 16 ounces of lead. If I fish 30 pound braid, 10 ounces of lead. That's substantial. It is when you're fishing at the rail for 36 hours straight, day or night or whatever it may be. It could be a big, big difference. So keep that in mind, 30 pound is all that you need. From there, you can put on a top shot, again, of diamond presentation fluorocarbon leader. And keep in mind, I keep obviously a wide variety of fluorocarbon leader. I use 30 pound, 50 pound, 60, 80. It, it varies depending on the venue. So I have a wide selection of fluorocarbon and oftentimes I'm switching. I'm switching a lot based on the prevalent conditions that I'm finding on any particular day. Getting back to the bait rig out there, okay? Here, this is real important here. Now, for the sake of display purposes, we'll see if we can kind of do this here. From my main line, from my braid, I've got a top shot again of diamond presentation, 50 pound fluorocarbon, 20 feet, 25 feet connected to the braid, so I've got some stretch. From there, I've got a diamond ball bearing barrel swivel, a 50 pound barrel swivel right there. However, before I tie that barrel swivel on, I, tie, I put another barrel swivel right on the main line, a sliding one. You see it right there? That's it. And from there, that's just about a 12 to 18 inch length of 20 pound or 30 pound mono. It's my weak link and a bank sinker. 12 ounces, 10 ounces, 16 ounces. Again, depending on the current, how fast you're drifting, which keep in mind out there, Pulley Ridge, Rankin Ridge, Howell Hook, all of those areas out there that you're gonna be fishing long, long range off the Gulf Coast for groupers, you cannot anchor. You can't anchor. A lot of those areas are protected, so you're drifting the entire time. And in turn, you may need a little bit of extra weight to make sure that you remain in the strike zone. From there, 50 pound diamond presentation fluorocarbon. What a surprise, right? That's my mainstay right there, 50 pound. And it concludes, and that's about 12 feet. I just have it coiled up. Obviously, it would be challenging to show you. And then from there, it concludes with, guess what? A VMC 9.0 tournament inline circle hook. The same grouper hook that I'm using in 30 feet of water on the patch reefs here in the Florida Keys off a of marathon with a live uh, pinfish, yellowtail, whatever, okay? Grunt, you know, with a live bait. You know, that same hook, I'm using it 120 miles offshore in the Gulf of Mexico when I'm fishing live bait. So it's, just, you know, again, a really versatile hook. Now, what's most important, what's most important with this rig is the bait that you're fishing. You know, you're not fishing live bait out there. Keep that in mind. You're not going out there and fishing a live pinfish. There's no live wells on these head boats. And even if you ran your own boat out there, a buddy's boat, you don't need live bait. A nice streamlined strip like a fillet of a Speedo or a goggle eye, a whole squid in the eight to 12 inch range. You don't want something that spins, okay? You want something nice and streamlined that's gonna fall through the water really nicely without helicoptering your line, okay? And pinwheeling your leader around your main line. So you want something very streamlined and something that drifts very naturally through the water column, okay? Like a squid or a nice fresh strip. It could be something you brought with you and just about anything that you catch out there is gonna be good bait as well. Smaller snappers, mackerels, bonita, 
Okay, just about anything that you come across. A fresh black fin strip, I've seen it all work, okay? I, you know, used to go out there and really be a stickler on the squid. To me, that was the best bait, was the squid. And when I couldn't get bites, you know, sometimes I had a little trick up my sleeve. I would take a big squid, like swordfish squid, I'd rip the head out, and what I'm left with is not the body, because that's a separate bait altogether. That whole tubular body is a great bait. But the head with all the tentacles, what does that resemble? An octopus. And I would embed that on the hook and drop it down. And, and I'll tell you what, those red groupers love them octopus. So worked really, really well. I got two killer baits from each swordfish squid. Rather than cutting it in half, you just rip the head off and fish it independently that way. Now, you may also push off and fish deeper water out there and deep drop. Now, when you deep drop out there, when you go over that 220 foot edge, it now plummets. And you're now fishing anywhere from 400 to 1,000 feet of water, okay? Depending on if the loop current is in there and you can't fish, you know, really deep, there's just too much current. Again, it's all conditions driven. It's all conditions driven. But if you can get out there and deep drop and fish in that deeper water, you're not going to see any more of those red groupers. You're not going to see any black grouper. What you're going to see are the snowy grouper. You're going to see yellow edge grouper. Okay. And that's going to be your primary targets out there in that deeper water where you're deep dropping. And that's the same here. Even here on the Atlantic Coast, Marathon Isle Marata, Key West, there's great deep dropping out here in that 600 to 1,000 foot, 1,200 foot range for snowies and yellow edge, especially the snowies. The snowy grouper is a really prized grouper. It's a deep water grouper. Um, they certainly can reach epic proportions. You know, a 10 pound fish is a great catch. A 30 pound fish is a monster and they get even bigger than that. You know, 40, 50 pound giant snowies. So you certainly can catch them out here. Um, and again, it's deep drop fishing. If you're going to do it with power assist tackle, you know, one of my, I don't wanna say favorites, but now my go-to electric reel, power assist reel, when I'm deep dropping out of the boat, out of a rod holder, is gonna be the Daiwa Seaboard. This is the 800 size, it's a two-speed power assist reel. Unlike the Tanacom, this has a much smoother drag, a much more powerful motor, and a much faster retrieve. It's really just a huge improvement over the Tanacom. So it's a great deep drop reel. You can fish it on a bent butt rod like this out of a rod holder, or you can take this reel off. For example, when I go long range Gulf of Mexico, I take this reel off and I put it on a straight butt rod and hold it under my arm and fish it manually the entire trip because it's that light, it's that comfortable, and it gets the job done, okay? And like I said, those yellow edge, they're mixed in with the snowies. You can drop down one drop, catch a yellow edge grouper, and then next drop and catch a snowy grouper, or even one of each on the same you know, drop on a multiple hook rig. So they intermingle with each other, but the snowies certainly are much more prevalent. Now my deep drop rig, let me show you this here, okay? Regardless if I'm fishing here off the Keys, out in the Atlantic, deep dropping for the groupers, for the snowies and yellow edge, or way out in the Gulf of Mexico. When you think deep drop rigs, right, you're very likely automatically thinking a five or six hook type chicken rig. You know, the five or six hooks are, you know, on short branches, they come off the main trunk line, they often have some glow tube on them. You put a bait on each hook, you drop it down, and that's deep dropping. You know, but that's not the most effective way to entice these bigger groupers, and oftentimes that's a detriment. You've got too much terminal tackle, too much junk on there, man. Lighten it up. Are you trying to catch five groupers at one time? You can't even freaking keep five groupers in your lifetime with these regulations. And I know that's an exaggeration, but I think you follow what I'm saying. You know, enjoy the fight, enjoy the, the hunt, enjoy each fish to its fullest. Plus, I don't want to hook five big fish. I'm going to lose my rig. I'm going to lose my tackle. It's just not going to happen. I want to catch one quality fish at a time. And if I'm lucky enough to double up and catch two fish, well, hey, well, even better. That's a bonus, right? So I fish a two hook rig. That's all that I fish. 
And I'm going to start at the bottom of the rig and kind of work my way up toward, you know, the running line. Bottom, obviously, a big ball bearing, a diamond ball bearing snap swivel. This is where I'm going to attach my lead. It's very important. Don't put a loop in your line because that lead's going to spin like a dime. And it will destroy your rig over time going up and down, spinning, spinning, spinning. So make sure that you have a ball bearing snap swivel on the bottom of your rig. I like to fish with two pounds of lead. If I'm fishing under my arm, Gulf of Mexico, way out there, Pulley Ridge, two pounds. Because we don't have the current that we have here. Remember that. You're going, wait a minute, how the hell are you fishing 800 feet of water, 700 feet of water, 600 with two pounds of lead? Well, again, I'm not dealing with three to five knots of current. Okay, Out there, you might be dealing with one knot of current. Maybe less, maybe a little bit more. You know, sometimes we have to bump it up to three pounds, above three pounds, and that fishery just becomes a little bit too challenging. Again, that's way out, Pulley Ridge, Howell Hook, Rankin Ridge, way out Gulf of Mexico. Here on the Atlantic side, 10 pounds is not uncommon, okay? 12 pounds is not uncommon. So you're gonna need heavy lead, and you're gonna need to bump it up. Instead of that outfit that I just showed you, you know, I may fish my, not may, I'm going to fish my LP, my Lingering Pittman S1200 with 10 or 12 pound sash weight out here in the deeper water with a lot of current. It's a different venue. Yes, I'm deep dropping. I'm fishing the same rig. I'm targeting the same fish and maybe the same depth in number. I may be fishing 700 to 800 feet here for the snowies and seven, 800 feet there, but it's a different venue in different conditions and I have to adapt accordingly. Okay, so keep that in mind. But my rig is gonna be the same. Like I said, it's gonna have that ball bearing snap swivel on the bottom, crimped on. The main trunk and the branches are 150 pound diamond extra hard leader material. As a matter of fact, there it is, right there. That's it, right there. Extra hard leader material. Hopefully you don't see that backwards or however all of this stuff works, it's crazy. But 150 pound leader material, Okay, it's the perfect balance, it's soft, but it's incredibly strong. I can get two big fish on here and not worry about my rig parting. I put a little swivel sleeve right off the bottom. So you see this, this is the sinker, about 12 inches up is a swivel sleeve. And then there's a long branch. Let's see if I could show this to you here. Three to four feet long, we'll say three feet long, right there, that same 150. Anybody want to guess what hook is on the end of that? Come on, I know you can do this. The VMC 90 inline tournament circle hook. There it is again. Okay, perfect hook. You'll catch, you can catch a hundred pound Warsaw grouper on that hook. It's incredibly strong. From there, I've got relatively long length, about 10 feet, believe it or not, before my second hook. Okay, and the second hook is exactly the same as the first one. There it is, three to four feet, okay? And the reason is a lot of times those snowy groupers, believe it or not, they'll come up off the bottom. It is not uncommon to catch more of the snowies and the yellow edge grouper on the top hook, and you know what you're catching on the bottom hook all day long? Tilefish, okay? Gray tiles with the occasional golden. Okay, so keep that in mind. I like to cover that water column. I have one hook closer to the bottom, and one hook higher up off the bottom. It's a simple two hook rig, but it's deadly effective. I don't have all of the junk on it. I don't need glow anything. These fish feed every day and they eat stuff that doesn't have glow plastic tubes sticking out of its butt, you know, or anything like that. It doesn't have a flashing light. The lights are great in certain scenarios, certain places. What I found here in the Keys, they're often a detriment because they attract sharks, number one. And if you're way out in the Gulf fishing on a headboat with 20 guys that are deep dropping, there is so much scent and so much stuff going on at the bottom right there, you don't need a light to attract attention. I promise you that, you don't need a light. Other venues, no light, no bite. Down here, different animal altogether. The rig is finished off. There's the top of it, a little loop right there, crimped on. And of course that gets snapped to my snap swivel and that's deep dropping right there for groupers, okay? And you know, the yellow edge, like I said, the snowies are predominantly gonna be there. Um, the yellow fin grouper are always gonna be a possibility and you'll catch some other bycatch there as well. So 
you know, we've talked about a lot of different species. We've spent nearly an hour kind of touching on a variety of different grouper species, different venues, different tactics, that there's so much more to it, you know? It's so rewarding to go out there, target these fish, and to be successful. Yes, there's a lot of limits in place. There's closed seasons, there's size restrictions, there's bag limits. If I sat here and tried to explain them all to you right now, I'd probably get in trouble because I don't even remember them all. All I know is right now you can't keep grouper, just obviously, till May 1st, and then kill them. Not every one of them, you know, but you can keep a few of them. And of course, it's a mix. How many gags do you have on the boat? How many can be black? How many, you know, all of that stuff. There are exceptions to those rules. And again, uh, I would be lying if I said I understood all of these in great detail, but in the Gulf of Mexico, for example, on, you know, head boats, you can keep groupers right now, you know? So there are some exceptions in certain venues, you know, so on and so forth. But as a rule, there are a lot of regulations and make sure that you stay in tune with those regulations, you know, and that you take care of the species. It's all for the good of the grouper species. And of course, the healthier the fisheries are, the more successful that you and I are. So again, I just wanna take the time to thank you very, very much for sitting in on our, on our grouper seminar here. I'm hoping that you picked up, you know, at least one tip that's going to help you when you're out there grouper fishing, you know, where you'll look back and you go, oh man, that's right, I could do this. Or, oh, hey, that makes sense, you know, or just put the pieces together, you know, and I want you to be as successful as possible. Don't let angler failure or tackle failure enter the equation, as I said so many times in so many seminars, you know, make sure that your gear is perfect, well-maintained, your drag set properly, once you hook that fish, enjoy every fight, and of course, take good care of the fish that you catch, enjoy them on the dinner table. What I will tell you, real quick, I just wanna end this with really harvesting a fish and respecting it. You know, you catch a 20 pound grouper, 30 pound grouper, whatever it is, you know, some guys will fillet it, discard the rack, and you end up with a nice fillet, grate a lot of meat. But the guy that really enjoys the fish and really respects that fish will fillet it and he'll use that entire carcass. You know, after, of course, removing the entrails and the gills I'll get rid of and I'll either make chowders or soups or you can make ceviche out of the little tidbits of meat that you didn't use. There's so many ways to really use all of that fish. You can roast the entire rack with the head. There's a lot of great meat in there. The cheeks, let's not forget that. Okay, so just all I'm saying is respect the fish that you catch, you know, be out there, have a great time with family and friends. If you want to catch up with previous seminars or if you missed anything here, like I said, this will be in the feed on our IG page and it will be on our YouTube page as well. So thanks again for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next Thursday.